it's a pleasure and an honor to uh, introduce Irene Jordina. And uh, Irene, please take it away and tell us about your living history. Okay, thank you very much, Orit, for your introduction. Um, so before starting my presentation, let, let me tell you that the next uh, Living Histories talk uh, will be given by Andrea Cavagna. And Andrea uh, is uh, not only my main collaborator, he's also my husband. So <laughs> at some point, our, uh, our histories will become very much interconnected. And uh, okay, but we will try to give a complementary perspective on things. And I hope this will be, this will turn out to be interesting for, for you to hear. So um, let me go back to uh, where I come from. Mm. So I'm Italian and uh, I was born uh, in, uh, in Sicily. Sicily is, a, is an island in the southern part of, uh, of Italy. And more precisely, I was born in this town here, this city, uh, which is called Catania. So this is, uh, this is a small city compared to the, <laughs> to the previous city, <laughs> urban uh, metropolitan area that, that we saw in the, previous, in the previous talk. So it's about uh, half a million inhabitants. And uh, it is located, as you can see from this map, just uh, um, uh, below the, uh, the Etna, the, the Vulcan. Okay, so here you can see an image of Catania and Catania is on the sea, uh, but you have the Vulcan really nearby. So it's very beautiful. You can, uh, you can enjoy the seaside uh, in, in the morning and then just go to the mountain in the afternoon. So it's very, it's very, very nice. Um, it's, uh, it's an old city. So you have, uh, like everywhere in Italy, you have uh, ancient ruins of uh, Greek and, Ro and Roman origin. Uh, but you all, the city is mainly a Baroque city with this uh, uh, black lava uh, stone, uh, so it is uh, particularly nice and fascinating. Um, it, it, it is uh, a port, uh, so historically it has always been uh, a, a big port in, uh, in southern uh, Italy, and um, it has been a commercial and, and cultural hub for centuries. Um, when I was a child uh, in the 70s, uh, uh, in Sicily, but it, I would say broadly in Italy, uh, it was a quite dark period. Uh, but um, in the late 80s, uh, when I was a teenager, especially in Catania, uh, there was a change, and uh, both from the social and political perspective. And, uh, um, and the Catania really became a very lively place. Um, and I enjoyed my, my teen years very, very much. Uh, on top of that, let me add that uh, it has, uh, this city has the typical con contradictions of uh, uh, decadent, resurgent Southern Italian cities. Uh, and uh, it, it, they, they have an East, uh, um, let's say a, a very interesting, it's a very interesting environment to, to grow in. So uh, my Catania years, uh, so I had uh, a typical Italian style education. What do I mean with that? In Italy, especially uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, um, education was very much humanities based. To give you an example of this, uh, here you can see an image of a book uh, who was uh, given to me as a present by my um, elementary school teacher. Uh, this was a very important uh, person for me because he was an exceptional teacher, really an exceptional teacher. And at the end of the school, he gave me this, this present. And what was uh, this book? This was a book of uh, Greek, ancient Greek poems in original language, of course, with the translation on the side. And so this is, this is to show you that really uh, the idea of culture in Italy is uh, you have to study what you come from. We come from uh, ancient Greek. This is where we have to start. Okay, so this is the the, the basic idea. And so um, when uh, when I had to choose uh, uh, which kind of high school attending, uh, as it was customary and in great part it still is, I I attended a, a classical high school. These were the best school. These were the schools where all the best students went. So I studied a lot of ancient Greek and Latin, a lot of literature, philosophy, history. I also studied modern physics, but very much, uh, more, much, much more Latin and Greek than, than modern physics. However, I liked the modern physics a lot. And uh, 
um, I was lucky enough to have decent teachers who just stimulated this uh, this interest. And I also had very, uh, very supportive and open parents. So my father was uh, an economics professor at the university, but he was really very much into science. So at home, uh, I had uh, plenty of uh, science dissemination books. And my mother, she was a politician. She was not completely into science, but I mean, she just supported me whatever I wanted to do. So in the end, I decided to, to study physics at the university. And I also decided to move away from Catania. Uh, there is a, a quite good uh, department of physics in Catania with a strong nuclear physics institute, the observatory and the Vulcan. So, I mean, I could have remained there, but I wanted to, to change, to, to visit other places. So I, what I did was to go to Pavia. Okay, Pavia, uh, so Catania is here. Here you see Sicily, Italy. Catania is here. So I went to Pavia. Pavia is in Northern Italy and it is a small town close to Milan. And uh, Pavia is a university city. So it, 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 it is full of, of university colleges, which is not common in Italy. In Italy, you have universities in the cities, you rent a flat, you attend the university. But Pavia is really a, a city, a small town full of colleges. So I, I, I took part to an admission exam to be admitted in one of these colleges and I got the position. So I went to this Collegio Gislieri College, which is, which is a quite a renowned college very old one, it was founded by Pope Pio X, a long time ago, at the end of the 17th century, 16th century, sorry, at the end of the 16th century. And as you can see, it's a very old place. You can see an image here. And, uh, and it, it is a multidisciplinary college. So every year you have a certain number of positions for all the disciplines. And so I made a lot of friends and I lived in really a very lively and interdisciplinary environment. At the same time, I attended the, 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 the Department of Physics and I got my master's degree here. At the time in Italy, you did not have the bachelor and the master, you had the, a unified cursus and at the end of which you got the master's degree. And uh, uh, this is me during those years in this image here in, uh, in one uh, in my room at the, at, at the college. And uh, uh, how was this? Uh, how were these years? So, well, the department was a small department, so it was uh, nice to study there because we had uh, direct contact with all the teachers and the professors all the time. So that was nice. And uh, at the same time, uh, I also had a passion for the philosophy of science in, in those years. And so eventually I, I, I was very much interested in the foundations of physics and uh, I, I ended up doing a, a master thesis on, uh, on the theory of measurement in quantum mechanics. And there was a professor there who was uh, very keen on studying uh, these, uh, these problems and I, I worked with him on, on a problem. So my first paper actually, you can see here, it's 96 foundation of physics and it is precisely on, on, uh, on quasi equivalent uh, uh, quasi-deterministic uh, in equivalent domains in the problem in quantum measure. Um, so when I finished my, my master, um, I changed them. So I went to Rome for uh, my PhD. I got a PhD positions in Rome and that was completely different. So Pavia was a small department, very intimate, few people. The Department of Physics in Rome, I think it is the largest uh, physics department in Europe. Uh, so there are many, many research groups, a huge amount of people, of students, uh, uh, very lively seminars uh, every day, uh, a lot of people coming and going. So th this was this was really um, a novelty for me. So I, I started attending uh, courses, master courses, PhD courses, just to complete my background. And uh, um, my PhD advisor so was, was Giorgio Parisi. Giorgio won the Nobel Prize this year, so everybody knows him. But even at the time, he was uh, a quite famous uh, uh, professor in statistical physics. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I decided I wanted to work with him, even, even though I had completely to change uh, uh, the subject of research as compared to what I did in my master's thesis. And uh, so it, it was, a, 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 these were fantastic years. Uh, working with Giorgio was uh, extremely stimulating and I learned a lot of things. Um, my PhD work was on spin glasses. Spin glasses are uh, uh, archetypes of disordered systems. They are nowadays considered as such. 
So these are systems uh, where you have disorder. So when the system orders, actually it can order in many different equilibrium states. And uh, a big problem is to describe and characterize uh, these many equilibrium states. So this is really uh, a very beautiful example of what is uh, called a complex landscape. And uh, I, I, I mean, my work was purely theoretical and I learned a lot of techniques, but uh, I mean, I think that the main, uh, the main uh, um, thing that I learned during these years uh, is just to think about complexity, to, to find the good observables, to find the good techniques uh, to describe, uh, interpret uh, and uh, imagine complexity in mathematical terms, of course. And, uh, and, and another very important event that occurred during, uh, during these years is that I met Andrea. So here in this image, you can see uh, Andrea and myself um, at a summer school in Begru. So in Begru, there is a fantastic school in theoretical physics. It is, uh, I mean, th there is still nowadays this Begru school, which is organized by Giulio Biroli and Chiara Gamarota. And it is fantastic because uh, you have lessons of, uh, during the day and then lunchtime you have sailing lessons. So basically you arrive uh, in the evening th that you cannot move nor think because uh, you spend the whole day attending uh, lectures and, and say. Uh, anyway, uh, Andrea was a, a PhD stu student uh, uh, with Giorgio in my same year. So we started discussing a lot and eventually uh, since, uh, I mean, we had a very good scientific um, uh, um, uh, uh, feeling for each other, we started working together. And we worked together for a couple of years, and then uh, we started also uh, a relationship. So we, our story actually starts as a scientific story, and then after some time it became uh, uh, also a uh, a love story, if you want. Okay, another very interesting experience related to this period is the fact that uh, uh, at the time there was a very strong uh, scientific network throughout Europe focused on, uh, on these order systems. So there were regular meetings, but really every couple of months there was a meeting with a lot of people. And this was, especially for the young students, this was a, a really an, an, an incredible way of meeting people and discussing. So here, you have an image of, uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a meeting in uh, ICTP, the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste. I don't remember the year, but I mean, here you can recognize, maybe it's too small, but you rec recognize a lot of people working in the field of disorder systems and a lot of young people who were students at the time that eventually became uh, renowned scientist, if you want. So, I mean, this was really a fantastic, uh, a fantastic scientific uh, moment, uh, formation moment, if you want. Then after, uh, after the PhD years, um, I went to- I mean, Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just so, just so you know, you're a few minutes over. Okay, so I will, I will go very quick on this. So um, we spent a couple of years uh, in, uh, in Oxford together with Andrea. And then I went to Paris for a couple of years and I, I kept studying uh, this kind of systems, pink glasses disorder system. Then I went back to Rome and for a few years I kept studying again disorder system and so on, but then there was a turning point. And I, I just want to, sorry if I'm a little bit late, but I want to spend just a few words on that. So, and this was when uh, I, I turned to biology to biophysics, to physics of living system. So this happened in 2004. There was a big project, a European project, uh, and uh, Giorgio Parisi, who was involved in this project, involved uh, Andrea and myself. And the project uh, was called the Starly, Star Flag, the Starling is in flight. So the idea was to study Starling flocks. So we were completely, we, we had no idea of, uh, of what Starlings were and so on, but Starlings are ubiquitous in Rome. So we just said, yes, let's do it. Okay, just for aesthetical reasons, for curiosity, and so on. So we were very naive. We spent two years without publishing nothing. But then, I mean, we got fascinated with the topic. And, uh, and from that point on, we just uh, moved to the physics of living system. So uh, Andrea and myself, we set up our lab. Uh, it is called the COBS lab, the Collective Behavior and Biological Systems in 2005. And we started looking at flocks and then eventually swarms, cell colonies, mosquitoes. We, I mean, now we, we study many different systems. And the idea was that 
is that still is we apply techniques from statistical physics to study uh, to study these uh, these uh, these systems here. Finally, just uh, the last slide. Uh, there was another important event, namely when uh, we met uh, Bill Bialek. Bill Bialek came to visit Rome in 2008. And here you see an image of Bill with his wife, Charlotte. And uh, I, I did it on purpose because uh, everything started with Charlotte. Charlotte was, is an artist and she was fascinated with, uh, with the, the, the flocking uh, of, of starlings. And so they were visiting a colleague of mine and so Marinari in Rome. And so at dinner, she said, oh, but these flocks, they're fantastic. And then she said, oh, there are two guys who study flocks. So we met together and uh, this was the beginning of, of a long scientific collaboration. And uh, we have been collaborating uh, since, since 2008. And now we, we visit each, out, each other very, very, very often. And then uh, just... To finish, uh, I, I just leave it here, the slide, the slide issues. So if anyone has questions about that, uh, they, can, uh, they can look at, at the slide and, uh, and ask me a question. This, but I mean, this is just to say that this, uh, what I told you is, is a nice parabola. Uh, in the end, uh, I'm doing what I like to do. I have a good position and so on, but this is, this is never super easy. There are, uh, uh, there are difficulties all along the way. And this might be due to, you know, um, very slow career advancement, which is, which is a great problem in Italy, for example. This can be due to the fact that, I mean, what I, what I write here, the two-body problem, you, you work with your partner. So every time you need to find a position, this should, I mean, combine you and your partner and so on. So, but in the end, if, if you, you persevere <laughs> and uh, you can do it. So that, that's it. Thank you so much for this lovely talk. Uh, I think we have time for a quick question before we move to the next speaker. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, Tim, go ahead. Hi, great, great uh, uh, view of uh, your career. Um, do you have an opinion how much of the little uh, or fewer women in physics over in Italy is uh, cultural? Uh, as opposed to funding issues? I think uh, it, it is, uh, it, I mean, I think that the funding issue is very, very, very important. And I tell you why. When I attended university, uh, in my class, we were half and half. If you look at the percentage of women students in, in physics uh, along the last 30 years, it is almost stationary around 30%. So 30% of the students are women, okay? And this is a larger percentage as compared to many other countries, okay? So when I was a student, Italy was much better than any other country in Europe, okay? Which were below 30%. Now other countries are reaching and, and they are over 30%, but Italy is around 30%. So the problem is not a cultural problem. The problem is that uh, Italy invests in research a very small amount of, of its budget. So you have fewer positions, and if you have fewer positions, it is very difficult to compensate for uh, the gender imbalance. So I, I hope I reply to, to, your, uh, to your question. All right, thank you so much, Irene. And we should move on to the next uh, speaker. Andrea, would you 